Hi, my name is Gabe Russell, and today I'm going to show you how to create a watch folder in the cloud. Watch folders are super handy for batch automation, uh, especially for transcoding video. Uh, so in a lot of production uh, pipelines, you'll need to take a, a raw file and transcode it to a bunch of different formats for uh, delivery to mobile devices or to send a low bitrate uh, version to a client. Um, so a lot of uh, encoding systems like Adobe Media Encoder and Telestream offer this feature, uh, but those can be pretty expensive and a, a pain in the butt to set up. So uh, I thought it'd be cool to create a cloud version of this uh, where you really just pay for the resources you use. So we're going to use uh, Amazon S3 to store the files, and uh, when you drop a new file in your watch folder in S3, it will trigger an AWS Lambda function, and uh, Lambda lets us run our own code uh, anytime we receive that trigger. So we're going to use that to uh, send a call to the Zencoder API, which will transcode that video and then send it uh, right back to that S3 bucket. So before we get started, let me just give you a quick look at how this works. So our inputs folder here is the watch folder. So I just drag this into there, upload the file, and this will trigger a Lambda function, uh, which will take the file name uh, use that as the basis for the output file name, uh, create a bunch of output profiles, and send that to the Zencoder API. And then Zencoder will transcode that video to all those different formats, and it will put them in this output folder. So if I refresh, I can see the files are starting to come in. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create our S3 bucket, which is where our watch folder is going to live. So we're going to go to the S3 service within AWS, and we're going to create a new bucket. So uh, bucket names are unique across the whole service, so it helps to create something with your name or your company name at the beginning, just so you don't use something that's already taken. So I'll call mine GRussell slash videos. Um, I would leave the US standard region. We are going to create two folders in this bucket. We'll call one inputs and the other one outputs. So inputs is going to be our watch folder. When we put files in there, it'll trigger the transcode and then they'll, the transcode files will end up in the outputs folder. So the next thing we need to do is give Zencoder access to this S3 bucket so they can pull our files out of the Dropbox and then put the transcoded files back in the outputs folder. So the way we do that is to add a bucket policy to this G Russell videos bucket. So we're going to click on the properties pane and open the permissions tab and we're going to add a bucket policy. So uh, Zencoder gives you an example of their bucket policy with their IAM user. I also have it set up in the GitHub repository for this project in bucketpolicy.txt. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. And you need to replace your bucket with the name of the actual bucket. Two different spots in the file. And save that. So this gives Zencoder's IAM user access to this bucket. Uh, the other way you can do this is to create a new user in the IAM console. We'll call this Zencoder user. And you can upload this access key ID and secret access key to the Zencoder interface. In the credentials tab, we can create Amazon S3 credentials. And we can copy and paste the access key and the secret access key into here and save those. And then we can give this Zencoder user access to our S3 buckets. You can also edit this policy to limit it to just a specific bucket. So now we have an IAM user that has access to S3 that we've given those credentials to Zencoder. So you can do one or the other. I think the bucket option is a little bit easier. OK, so now that we have our watch folder set up in the bucket, we can go ahead and create our Lambda function. 
So I'm going to navigate to the Lambda console here. Because I don't have any Lambda functions set up, it's going to prompt me to get started. And I'm going to skip the blueprint option since I already know what I'm doing here. And so we'll give it a name. I'm going to call it transcode video. I can skip the description for now. I'm going to use the Python runtime. Now for the code, I've given an example of the code for this function in the GitHub repository. So I'm going to just grab that and I can just copy and paste it right into their inline code editor here. If you wanted to write some more complex code and use custom libraries and things like that, you could also upload a zip file. But we're just doing a very simple single file function here. So uh, just a quick walkthrough. Um, there's some global variables at the top here where you'll need to add your own Zencoder API key. So I'll just grab that from the Zencoder API section here. And paste that in. The input folder name, that's the name of the, the watch folder that I already created on S3 called inputs. The output base URL is the bucket and folder that you want the transcoded outputs to be uploaded to. So in this case, I'm going to use the same bucket name as our inputs, and we have the outputs folder set there. Uh, I've also added the ability to get a confirmation email for each transcode. Uh, if you don't want to use that, you can just delete that from uh, line 39 here in the code. So first thing we're doing here is getting the, the bucket name and the uh, key name of the, the file that was uploaded uh, to S3 that triggered this event. So the key name that comes from uh, the S3 event includes the folder name that it's in, which is the inputs folder. So we're going to strip the input folder name out of the file name so that we can reuse it for the output. Uh, and we're also going to take the file extension off of the end of the file name. Uh, and then uh, we're going to set our headers, which include the API key. And then this API data JSON object is uh, the job that we're going to create in Zencoder. So we're telling it that the input uh, URL is an S3 bucket, the name of the bucket, and the uh, input key that we got from the event that triggered this. Uh, we're going to set our notification email address if we want that. And then each of these outputs uh, will generate a new, uh, a new transcode. So uh, this is a, a template for uh, generating HLS files. So uh, the base URL, uh, as we've set up above, is, is our output directory. And then we're using uh, the, the output key that we derived from the input file name uh, as the beginning of the file name for the output files. So we're generating a couple different bit rates here, um, and the manifest files and all of that. So you can replace this with your own transcode settings. There's uh, several templates on Zencoder's uh, request builder. So you can explore those. So we're just going to create an HTTP request using that API data and those headers, and send that to Zencoder, and then log the response. So the next thing we need to do is create an execution role for this code to run under. So we're going to create an S3 execution role. And it pops up a new window here, so you might have to disable your pop-up blocker in your browser. So we're creating a new role, and we're just going to call it the Lambda S3 execution role. And it already has populated the policy document here for us. Click Allow. And now that new role shows up in this box here. For advanced settings, uh, the only thing I would do is bump up the timeout. Um, most of these requests should complete in under a second, but just in case there's a slow API response, I want to give it a few seconds to return. Otherwise, the, the function will just cancel and you won't get any transcoded files. So we'll click Next, and we'll create the function. So now we've created this function, and we need to link it up to that S3 bucket. So we'll click on Event Sources. Click on Add Event Source. I'm going to use S3 as the type of source. So we're going to choose our videos bucket that I created earlier as the bucket. And the event type is object created. So any any time we create an object in this bucket, we'll receive an event. Except we're going to add a prefix so that only files created in the inputs folder trigger this function. 
So we're going to make sure our enable event source is checked off. So this actually will fire and submit. So that's basically it. So let's see if this works. So I'm going to go into our watch folder here and I'm going to upload a file. And start the upload. So obviously you can upload to S3 in many different ways using the web UI. You can mount it using a Fuse file system. You can use uh, command line tools or API tools. Uh, however you get the file into the watch folder will work. And let's take a look at our outputs folder. So you can see the files are already starting to trickle in. If I go over to this Zencoder job list, we can see our job is processing. And we're getting an error for our first output because this is an audio-only output and the file I uploaded doesn't have any audio. So that's to be expected. So it's chunking through there. And there are files. So this is the email confirmation I got from Zencoder. Uh, it's saying all these transcodes are finished with links to these. I can click on them and download them. Uh, it does show that uh, the job failed because the audio only output failed, uh, which is expected because my input video didn't have any audio tracks. So that's about it. We've got an S3 bucket with a watch folder. We've got a Lambda function that receives those file creation events and creates a Zencoder job to transcode the files, and those files get dropped back in the output folder. So if we need to troubleshoot this, we can go into the CloudWatch console and click on Logs. And there's a log group automatically created for our transcode function. And we can see the API response that we're logging from our Lambda function uh, being printed here. So we just confirm what's being sent to Zencoder. And you can also use the Zencoder interface to view any errors. If you ever want to tweak your transcoding settings, you can always go into this code tab and edit this in line. So you could switch up these uh, encoding profiles, save this, and any new file that's added to the S3 bucket will use the new version of this code. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, pretty easy to set up, pretty easy to use, uh, super handy for, for big batch jobs or uh, something that you do a lot in your workflow that you need to automate. Uh, that's it. Thanks.